Hey, hey, my friends, it's me, Andrew Fantasia. Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie's coverage of the Marvel United Multiverse Kickstarter. As usual, if you have fun watching this video, uh, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, give some love to that subscribe button, all that great stuff. And if you think I'm all right, you can check out my book, Side Scroller, which is available to buy on Amazon right now, all over the world. You can get the paperback, which is this chunky fellow right here, or you can also get the ebook if you prefer it that way. So check out Side Scroller now on Amazon.com. If I remember, I will put a link in the description below. So welcome to the final update on the Kickstarter campaign for MU Multiverse. Uh, I'm dressed like this because I had to make another video for my other channel uh, where I'm doing movie awards, which I do every year. And if you want to check those out and keep up with those, you can head on over to my separate channel, which is just my name, Andrew Fantasia. That's the name of the channel, where I host the annual Fanny Awards, which are like the Oscars, the better because they're not the Oscars. But anyway, that's why I'm wearing this, but it was kind of fitting and I didn't feel like changing. Uh, it was kind of fitting because it's a celebratory day. We're celebrating the fact that Marvel United Multiverse has not only been fully funded, but the Kickstarter has finished and it was an exhausting three weeks. Keeping up with this kind of felt like a part-time job. Uh, so I'm sad that it's over, but I'm happy that it's over, but I'm also sad that now we have a year ahead of us to just sit and wait and count down the days till we get all these goodies in our mailbox. But until then, let's recap the final batch of stretch goals and rewards that we unlocked in this beautiful, beautiful game. And of course, let's see how many of those ended up on my list. First up, we unlocked Mole Man, the Fantastic Four villain who just has these weird funky glasses. He kind of looks like Captain Cold if Captain Cold got smushed down really low and was given a hell of a nice walking stick. Mole Man finally made his way into the game. Uh, my friend Ryan, who does the Infinity Rewatch podcast with me, tells me there are so many great Fantastic Four villains, and I don't think we've even scratched the surface of all of them. So, season four, I'm looking in your direction. But in the meantime, we've got Mole Man to keep us company, and he is on my list. So let's head on over to the list and cross his name off right now. Thank you, Mole Man, for showing up to the party, even if you did show up fashionably late. And speaking of being late, you know, the full moon was well on its way through the sky before we finally got Werewolf by Night. And he's here, and he looks amazing, and he's got an end-of-turn card, which is great because that's so rare in Marvel United. I can only think of, like, Old Man Logan and Phoenix. They're the only ones I can remember who have that card. I'm sure there's, like, maybe one more that I'm just forgetting. But Werewolf by Night has a, an end-of-the-deck, bottom-of-the-deck. Sorry, I said end-of-turn card. He has a bottom-of-the-deck card that causes him to go into a frenzy and he hurts any heroes that he comes into contact with because he's a werewolf and we should all know by now that that's bad news. If I'm remembering my rhyme from the Universal Motion Picture, even a man who is pure of heart and says his prayers by night will become a wolf when the wolfbane blooms and the moon is full and bright or something along those lines. So Werewolf by Night, what a wonderful addition to the roster. The supernatural characters have been filled out nicely. No supernatural villains, though, as far as I can tell. No Lilith, no Mephisto, no Blackheart. Season four, I'm still looking in your direction. After we got Werewolf by Night, we unlocked another team deck, Red Hulk's Thunderbolts. I could be wrong. I have to look back through those team decks, but I think there already was a Thunderbolts. Maybe I, I, I have to check those again. I might be just completely making stuff up off the top of my head. But if not, then we've got a Thunderbolts team. And if so, then we've got two Thunderbolts teams. Either way, these team decks sound fun, and I'm glad that we have a bunch of them. The more, the merrier. And this one has Red Hulk in the name. And it kind of sounds like a boy band, like Red Hulk and the Thunderbolts. Let's go. I wonder what their top 10 songs would be called. Somebody make that album. Oh, and I almost forgot uh, because it was kind of an underwhelming stretch goal, but Mole Man also helped unlock a Monster Island location uh, because he comes with henchmen like Gargantos and everything. So we got Monster Island as a location. That's awesome. But anyway, after Red Hulk's Thunderbolts, guess who showed up to the party? Let me give you a hint. He helped tip the scales of Spider-Man villains. Yeah, there he is. Kirk Connors the Lizard is finally here. We've had artwork for him since season one and we get to have the Lizard as a villain. I thought he was going to be an anti-hero because I'm only coming at this from the 90s Spider-Man cartoon where he shows up in Secret Wars uh, fully functional 
as like a smart lizard with Connor's mind intact. But that's okay. We got him as a villain. Let's check him off the list right now. The lizard is finally here. Yes! Beautiful. He's got this cool function where he's so slippery and wily, he doesn't actually walk on the locations. He walks on sewer grates around the locations. You know what that means? Yes, we are this much closer to getting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles united. Mm -hmm. In fact, somebody made a homebrew of those on Etsy. And even though I have no TMNT minis, I'm sorely tempted to get those cards because I just love Ninja Turtles so much. And a good Ninja Turtles board game is either extremely hard to come by, extremely expensive, non-existent, or all of the above, somehow. But yay, I'm so happy we got the lizard. And of course, he comes with a cardboard Sinister Six puzzle piece, so you can add him to your Make Your Own Sinister Six Sunday Bar. Spectacular. After this, we unlocked a stretch goal that I didn't even know could be a stretch goal, which is a box for all the stretch goals. I thought that was a given. I don't understand what they would do if that didn't get unlocked. How would you get everything? Would it just come delivered to you in a giant sack at your doorstep like Santa Claus? I don't know, but I'm really happy we unlock this so that I don't ever have to find out the answer. As I have said before, I'm a person who's weird because I keep all of my boxes uh, because I just love the artwork. The artwork on the Marvel United boxes I find beautiful and colorful and it just brings me so much joy to look at them. All the boxes are beautiful artwork, but the two stretch goal boxes for seasons one and two, like the artist outdid themselves with those boxes. And we're gonna talk more about those in future videos, but I am so happy that we have a third box uh, that's gonna have all the stretch goals in it. And I'm really excited to see what the art is going to look like. I'm sure the artist has been given the final tally of characters, so they're hard at work on the art as we speak. Maybe we'll get that um, artwork in a couple of months uh, as they pepper in the little delicious updates to keep us happy while we wait a full year for this game to show up. And after we unlocked the box, we got a character that I didn't expect to ever see, even though there was lots and lots of comments saying we wanted to get her, was Moon Girl with Devil Dinosaur. And this is another bigature. This is gonna sit next to Stature in that stretch goal box as a giant mini that is, you know, bigger than the average mini because it's a little girl riding a big T-Rex. And I say little girl, and I, I wanna stress that because I think it's kind of neat. I don't know much about Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Moon Girl is a child. Like, I think she's a little kid. And if that's the case, that's so cool because if you look at this mini, you look carefully, especially the way they compared it. She looks smaller than the average figure that comes with the game. Devil Dino is obviously much bigger, but she looks smaller, which makes sense because she's a little kid. The only other kid we've seen is Kid Loki and they kind of made him big because he's sitting on a big thing, but this looks more like they put her to scale with the rest of the heroes in the campaign. Or maybe it just serves to make Double Dinosaur look even bigger, but however you wanna shake it, this is a great looking mini. People who love this character must be really excited. And from what I you know, learned when I looked her up, she's another Inhuman. So it's another character to add to the list of Inhumans. I think now we have every famous Inhuman character, period. I hope I'm right. And after them came a fresh new villain, kind of fresh new villain, the Purple Man, Zebediah Kilgrave. I think that's his real name. We saw him as a henchman in the core box. I didn't think we'd see him as a main villain, but here we are unlocking the purple man and his mini looks cool because he's like holding a little, looks like a voodoo doll and he's pulling the strings because he's that kind of evil. He's a bad dude. I just find it amusing and confusing that we now live in a world where we have Red Hulk, but he's purple and we have purple man, but he's red. That sounds like the lyrics to a 1960s Beatles song where they have had way too much LSD. Purple is red and red is purple, but whatever. I'm here for it. I'm not a painter because I don't have the funds to buy paint or the skills to put the paint to any kind of applicable use, but I'm sure painters are gonna make Red Hulk look red and Purple Man look purple. In the meantime, I just have to let those two sides of my brain adjust every time I look at those figures, but I'm happy to have Purple Man. Although, not as happy as I am to have the final character we unlocked. Guys, we got the shocker. The Shocker, as the last character, I can't tell you how happy it makes me that the the final character in this giant campaign is not some epic monstrosity like Fin Fang Foom or Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. It's not some huge multiversal character like Mobius or Uatu the Watcher. It's literally the thug who wears a pincushion and robs banks. The Shocker was the ultimate figure 
to unlock in the MU Multiverse campaign. As a guy who showed up to this party hoping he could mingle and maybe even flirt with a couple of Spider-Man villains, the fact that Shocker closed things off is nothing short of glorious. Because not only do we get Shocker as a villain, but we get him, of course, as another alternate villain to add to your Make Your Own Sinister Six mode, which means, you ready for this? 90s kids in particular, I hope you're listening to me. We now have Dr. Octopus, Mysterio, Rhino, and thanks to this campaign, we have Chameleon, we have Scorpion, and we have Shocker. So you can finally live out your dream. Maybe it's just my dream, I don't know, but you can finally live out the dream of facing off against the 90s cartoon version of the Sinister Six, or as they called it, because Fox Kids thought Sinister was too creepy of a word, the Insidious Six, who of course were hired by my favorite, not only Spider-Man villain of all time, but my favorite Marvel and comic book character period of all time, the Kingpin, uh, who put that group together. So if you really want to live out your 90s fantasy, you can face off against the Insidious Six now, because Shocker's been unlocked, and then after you beat them, you can go right after Big Willie Fisk himself and take on the Kingpin. What a world we live in. When I got my Marvel United pledge last year, when I got the big X-Men pledge, because I ordered X-Men and season one, because I didn't have anything. So when I finally got everything and it came to my doorstep, even though I play randomly, I like to choose all my characters at random. I had to start because I, I just had to for my own heart and soul. I had to start by playing as Spider-Man and facing off against Kingpin. I just had to do that. That was what I had been craving for a year. So when we finally get this next box full of goodies, I'm probably going to have to resort to facing off against the Insidious Six. So there's Shocker, he's here, we can cross him off the list, and that is that. For the final stretch goal, they gave us one last uh, type of villain, it does count as a villain, that we can add to the list, which is the Dark Avengers. It's a gameplay mode, you will need US Agent, You'll need Moonstone, Bullseye, I can't remember who else is in there, but you're just going to need a bunch of characters, most of them from this campaign, to play out the Dark Avengers. And you can fight them as a group. And that's really something special. So for all the people who are Dark Avengers fans, there you go. You got them. And that's that. Because folks, after that, the campaign ended. We all got a great big email that said thank you with this lovely picture of Megan Lizard and Werewolf by Night having a grand old time. They look like the three people that you invited to a party and they just kind of stood off in a corner drinking punch and they didn't socialize with anybody, but you know they're cool anyway, so you just let them be. But there they are. We did it. We finally made it. We survived long enough to see the end of this campaign. So I thought we'd take a look and see all together how many characters I had on my wish list versus... How many got checked off? Let's look at that now. So, all together, I had 97 characters on my wish list. 97 divided by 2 is 48.5. And we unlocked, after all was said and done, 49 characters from my wish list. So, it was pretty much exactly half of my list. Like, down to the wire. Half my list got put into the game, the other half did not. That is really something else. I'm going to make one of my future videos all about the characters we didn't get and what I might potentially like to see a season four look like, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. Right now is all about celebrating this moment of victory that we all got right here. So, to close things off, on a high note. So here they are, game show style, my thoughts and feelings on this campaign, which we'll get into in more specifics in another future video down the road. Here we go. Favorite moment of the campaign, unlocking Hobgoblin. Least favorite moment of the campaign, all the times we did not unlock Hobgoblin. Favorite new location, Statue of Liberty, because she's a chibi too, come on. Favorite new gameplay mode, I love to make your own Sinister Six, but I gotta go with the campaign decks. Character I never expected to see that we ended up getting, Demo Goblin. Character I totally expected to see that we didn't end up getting, The Leader. Best looking miniatures. This one's gotta be a tie between Demo Goblin and Ghost Rider. I mean, wow. Character that I didn't know existed, but I was really happy to learn about, Husk. That's all I can think about off the top of my head right now. As I said, we'll do more videos in the future where we go into more detail, including one where I will rank all the expansions and one where I will rank every character that we have gotten. 
in this campaign. That's right. Put on some coffee for that one because that's going to be a long video, but I'm going to do it. So that is that, my friends. Here we are at the end of the line. Half of my wish list checked off. I want to give a special thank you to all of you who have watched along with me and followed along and just had fun enjoying the candy-colored glee that is this Marvel United campaign. Thanks so much to all of you. Thanks so much to all the great YouTube people and Board Game Geek people and just people in the chats and fans, you know, who got to share in this experience. People like the Meeple Monkey, uh, my favorite Marvel United YouTuber who just does great board game stuff on his channel. Check out the Meeple Monkey for more stuff. He does a lot of playthroughs too. I, I don't I don't even know how to begin setting up cameras for a playthrough. So watch him. He's a pro at it. He knows exactly how to do it and make it look nice and shiny. Uh, just all the people who have commented and liked and sent their thoughts and feelings. That's what it's all about, is just getting hyped together. We're all on board the same hype train, so let's enjoy one another's company until we finally pull into that glorious stop, hopefully no more than 12 months from now, because I only have so much patience in my body. But that's that. Until next time, everyone. Thanks again, and I will see you all here for whatever comes next, because there will be stuff coming next in the master plan.